Hey, welcome back to the Eden Room. I'm Cat Diva. You are watching the Full Moon in Scorpio live with Vicky Green, the business astrologer. She'll be joining us any moment. Uh, the Full Moon in Scorpio, people, it's intense to say the least. I'm joined by Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Kat. Oh, so good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. What a weekend. Um, Full moon in Scorpio. Let's dive straight in yeah. and unpack this one. Uh, the energies are pretty intense. I'm experiencing a lot of um, just deep stuff, deep healing, deep processing. Yeah. I feel very sensitive. How, how, what's going on? What do we need to know about this full moon in Scorpio? What do we need to know? <laughs> and how can we then work so, with these energies right now? Absolutely. So Scorpio, welcome to Scorpio. Um, we're all feeling it at the moment. Um, Scorpio is in many ways the most intense sign. So, so the solar time of the year obviously is around that kind of Halloween time, October, November. It's all about rebirth and transformation. Um, also rules things like our, our intimate lives, sort of really where we get to know someone else in a really close way. And also where we actually sort of come in touch with the mysteries of life. So that can be obviously the mystery sort of death and rebirth, but also things like the occult, anything that we can't quite put our finger on, but it is part of the mystery and the magic of, of the universe. And here we are, huge contrast because we're at the time of the year with, with the sun out, even if it's still a bit chilly, where everything is really coming to life. It's beautiful. It's Garden of Eden moment. It's almost like who introduced this energy this is almost like that moment where we find the snake, you know, we go, oh my gosh, who would have thought that in this moment of brightness and beauty, we are also challenged to deal with what's hidden, what we haven't wanted to acknowledge either in ourselves or in our relationships. So we're smack bang in that polarity of how do I make sense of it all? Um, because we're talking a Scorpio full moon, so the moon traditionally rules, you know, obviously it was women and sort of psychic skills, but absolutely it's number one thing is our emotions. So here we go. We're getting a big burst of energy right on those emotions that perhaps are our deepest, darkest, almost most fearful moments. But I would have to point out that it's also the possibility of our biggest transformation. And that's really what I think we should talk about a bit today. It's like, what are the opportunities to use this supercharged full moon? It's going to be a super moon. The moon is particularly close to the earth. It's going to look gorgeous. It's inspirational this time of year. And so tuning into that actually can really sort of help, help us on our way, I would say, into becoming more of who we want to be, particularly through this next summer. Wow, wow. Okay, so what, what has been coming up and what I've been noticing is, and I'd be interested if there's something on Saturn or something, that this is really about, for me anyway, how I've been viewing love and myself and, as you say, intimacy and my desires in that aspect of my life. And I feel that the social programming and the conditioning is just peeling off right now. Like, like the, 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 we have this sort of story in our society. If you, if you finished a relationship with someone or something, then, you know, they're your ex and you have to kind of X them out of your life. And, and what if that person is still all that love there and all that good flow and all that good current and navigating that, for example, or what if someone's in a situation right now where they suddenly start to realize I've been living this because I've been trying to keep up expectations. I've been trying to go with the values of society and the outside world. I feel like there's this full moon energy around actually what do i value is that is that something that's going on and it's almost like that's... this rebellious spirit of going actually i can do life how i want to do life and i can do love how i want to do love that's beautiful that is spot on <laughs> so we have all this wonderful taurian energy as well so full moon sun opposite moon so we talked a bit about the moon is going to be in scorpio but the sun is in taurus and it's sitting there with uranus in taurus as well and Uranus in Taurus is all about getting in touch with our own values, as you're saying, doing it our way, being authentic. 
that doesn't mean to say ignoring all the rules it means making up our own rules and being able to live by them peacefully mm. and that's also getting a bit of a supercharge because we have venus and mercury they just conjoined last night in taurus so actually for those of us that want to do things a better way we're being supported we've got venus the planet of relating she rules taurus so actually she's right at home with mercury the planet of communication working together so the opportunities have never been better that if we can have the courage to talk about our feelings mm -hmm. that actually we can make progress in a way that previous generations haven't been able to mm -hmm. i mean you know that uranus in taurus this is groundbreaking stuff you know uranus takes 84 years to go around so like actually being in taurus is very special <laughs> <laughs> totally like it's not going to happen again in any of our lifetimes the Uranus in Taurus and if you are a Taurus you probably like I am my birthday's Wednesday I'm I'm feeling it so strongly right now but I'm feeling it as you say in this very generative way it's not easy but it's so generative and it, it is. yeah and I just I love what you're saying I know you wanted to give people permission today I know you wanted to give them a lot of allowance because yes it's spring yes it's beautiful yes the sun is shining and yes it's still super intense and it's okay to feel everything you're feeling as deeply it's as you are <laughs> it's it's really intense and and just i know you mentioned about saturn so saturn is in the mix mm. so we have the this sort of it's almost like the sea source we've got the moon up well and then we've got this stellium we've got uranus sun mercury venus all up the other end and squaring it like in the middle is saturn so we've got saturn and aquarius still and we've got this squared relationship which is kind of a challenging one between saturn and uranus all year well they're gearing up they've done one one exact me earlier in the year they're gearing up for number two out of three in june so we can absolutely feel so saturn and aquarius is still kind of saying though traditionally saturn planet rules so this might be where we feel we're stepping outside the perceived box i guess the challenge is to see how we can integrate saturn and saturn's lessons because saturn teaches mastery mm -hmm. so if something hasn't happened quite yet there might be a good reason for it so there is a little bit of the expect the unexpected with Uranus. Saturn is saying, well, yes, but. So there, there's still a little bit of moment of reflection of, of actually really making that conscious choice of what, not rebelling for any reason, but rebelling to be more in our truth. All of these planets are coming together really to drill into us, I believe, just the importance of being true to ourselves because only being true to ourselves is what's going to get us through in terms of how we're building with the energies that are now alive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the opportunities are greater than they've ever been, but there is no room for sort of flaky feelings anymore. Right. You know, we're being challenged to absolutely know our stuff and interrelate with others in a really authentic way. And, and I feel that, and I feel like there's no room for living on the surface anymore, right? This is like pulling us deep yeah. and down and inward. And even if, we haven't yet developed the communication skills to courageously express that truth. The, I think the incentive, the impulse is at least get honest with yourself, at least feel this, at least own this. And then you don't, you don't need to know what you have to then do. It doesn't have to make sense. Like it can be true that your parents did the best they could and that you had this experience in your childhood you know it can be true that these these two things that might seemingly be opposing are actually you can hold them both and i feel that we're being drawn into this deeper level this deeper current where we're not living on the surface of reactivity or avoidance and denial we're having to go in and and look at these things and feel that we've got some taurians on the chat so hi all the taurians hi oh, hello taurians to put the questions in here <laughs> emma saying rebelling to be more in our truth how wonderful um and people wanting to do things in a better way move forward rewrite rewriting oh. those scripts is that something that is is up for us right now in this completion of the cycle it's, here? it's absolutely up for us i mean there is something incredibly creative about that scorpio full moon anyway I mean, you know, Scorpio, it has got all those regenerative elements, you know, not wanting to sort of sit around and talk lots about sex, but there is something quite creative about coming together with other people to create life. 
you know so this is absolutely like where do we get our inspiration from i mean the exact moment of the full moon which is tomorrow morning we also have um we have pisces rising and we have neptune in pisces so for those of us who really do like to get in tune either with our sort of mystical and spiritual sides and or with our creative and artistic sides you know this is a full moon that's absolutely dripping in that kind of creative energy you know venus very strongly associated with the arts at home in taurus I mean, this could be a really productive time for those of us that are prepared to go within there is something you know it's all very scorpio but mining for the jewels you know there is real treasure in that scorpio full moon that's just waiting for us to almost be brave enough to go into the dark to collect it oh, yeah that's so it isn't it we've got to take the courage and go down into that descent emma's asking what time is the full moon at what when is it exactly sure so it's 4.32 tomorrow morning, UK time, so that's British summer time. So there's going to be both tonight and tomorrow night should be fantastic chances to see it. Um, and it should be really, truly beautiful. So more so than perhaps other times when we've, we've been talking, I would really encourage people to go outside and experience mm -hmm. it. Hopefully it's not too cold. <laughs> Um, but I think it would be well worth seeing, particularly as it's this super moon. So in the US, they call it a pink um super moon this one because of the time of year that it arrives the time many of their spring flowers come out they're pink mm -hmm. it's not that the moon itself will be pink but i like the thought of that i think that that's that's a very that's a very sort of taurian time of year with all this venus energy to actually go and experience that that other side that immediate tuning in and allow ourselves to receive you know this is a very beautiful receiving time of year and those inspirations that perhaps we're blocking because we're too afraid they might be trying to whisper into our ears you know it'd be really worth tuning in. wow go and do some moon bathing folks this tonight's the night or tomorrow as well um okay yeah. well amazing so when wait okay so we're in this deep process right now it's that full moon then that full moon's gonna wane what are we heading into? I can feel the Beltane energies building. I feel that creative, uh, generative new renewal. We, we obviously at the Eden Room really, you know, kind of began our journey on Samhain in many ways. And we celebrated that virtually with, with you guys, with our community. Um, and now here we are at Beltane, which is the opposite of Samhain. Um, let's talk a little bit about what this next turn of the wheel looks like, what we've got coming up. If you haven't checked out the videos on the YouTube channel, by the way, our incredible midlife mentor, Debs DeVries, has put together an at-home Beltane ritual that you can enjoy this Saturday. So definitely check that out. It's on the YouTube channel at the Eden Room TV and um, it's worth doing. It's a beautiful way to celebrate Beltane. So Vicky, over to you. What, what can we expect in this coming week or so now? Right. Well, this week's quite a hot week in terms of astrology. Um, so we've talked a bit about this stellium, but actually we have exact, we have the sun and Uranus coming together. Um, that's later this week. That's going to be quite, so this is totally expect the unexpected. Okay. This is going to be more, the things more that... <laughs> more more of that so we've had a taster of it because we've had venus and mercury come through obviously uranus has been happily sitting into us for a little while but this is the point when the sun comes around it's like wow you know the the universe's gloves are off at that point and so i think it's really important that people know that oh my gosh this is going to get exciting because there's also some huge potential coming in that maybe just maybe it was what we were hoping for might actually arrive because um, we've definitely been going through, I think, a few months where having trust has been the main part of the manifestation experience. Um, at some point, some of this manifestation stuff, I do believe, is going to be starting to come in in terms of 2021. So that's through through this week. Um, we do also, it's quite interesting with the Scorpio moon, we have Pluto is going to go retrograde later this week. So we will be feeling doubly in on that Scorpio that's energy because there's Pluto... It, it's intense. it's really Scorpio intense clue to go re retrograde forget about it That's yeah intense. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, it's a beautiful one i find it amazing how they often say in astrology teaching that the universe tells us something if it's important it tells us it three times so so if we were in any doubt that we're, we're, we're working through our treasure that this is the week and um, i think when we do come round, uh, so we'll go through beltane then we'll be heading towards the new moon in taurus that's an exciting moment 
um, because really getting that sort of that that double fresh experience of the taurian energy um plus that's teeing things up because the next full moon will be a lunar eclipse so we're just about to enter eclipse season and i might have mentioned before but i very much see eclipses as being a quantum leap so for things that have been brewing for a little while that we've been working on it's a bit like playing snakes and ladders except they're all ladders we suddenly go up a level so getting our intentions ready i'd suggest that that next new moon in taurus session would be really helpful because my goodness if we've got a chance to really accelerate what we want to see happening over the next couple of months i can't remember the date for that that's early may for us isn't it, it will be, yeah it there'll is, be a it reminder is. out if you're on the list at www.theedenroom.com there will be a reminder about that new moon session sounds like a really good one not to miss um i wanted to talk touch in on this like if that up level's coming, right, there's, we know that the next new moon and that next full moon's eclipse season and it's all ladders and it's the up level, you know, the yeah. gear shift, that we've sort yeah. of felt this energy building for, as you say, and putting the preparation in place for. Um, I want to share a bit about messiness. I, I want to touch into that scorpionic messy, and you keep saying it's beautiful, and I'm, going, I'm saying it's really intense, you say it's beautiful, and it is beautiful, <laughs> but what I want to convey to people is like, it's not always pretty. Like it's always beautiful, yeah. but it's not necessarily this neat, pretty, little perfect doll with no personality. It's much more like the screaming, blazing, crying, <laughs> you know, all out there, right? Like it's beautiful, but it's beautiful in this powerful, unraveling, you know, messiness. And I think there needs to be this permission to unravel, this permission to let go. Yeah. This is a full moon with some serious power and if it's unraveling you there's a there's a call to like go and let yourself be a mess for a minute or unravel for a moment or admit you're whatever you're feeling tired you know frustrated alone angry raging and because i think that this discharge this like pff, release is sort of necessary for that quantum shift that's coming yeah that's how i feel it i think that's spot on Thanks, Cats. That's a good reminder to me as well <laughs> to share. All right. Right. To know that it's not forever like this bit here. This this April, you know, April is this month of miracles. It takes us out of the winter and into the summer, yeah. really. And it's this, as you say, like a transition time. So we're meant to feel a little raw and a little messy and a little, uh, and this year more than ever, I would say, coming out of our cocoons and our lockdown and, and, and not knowing if yeah. we're quite ready for that and feeling like we want to lie in the fetal position for another six months before we, before we take any courage, yeah. courageous action, you know? Um, and I just, I, yeah. I know you wanted to create, one of the things you said, which was so beautiful for today was like, I want to give people permission. I want to create the space, I want to yeah. hold them in whatever the unraveling or the deep feeling that is bubbling up so that it can be released tonight and is there anything that we can do with this full moon to sort of you know allow that or to mark that so we we do feel clearer when it comes into may and that union and that fertile creative quantum leaped energy is here you know this is the invitation right to let it get a bit messy, messy now yeah. knowing it's this too shall pass. This is temporary. It's okay. I, uh, that that's so right. And and thanks, Kat, for just calling out because it's it's easy for me to get into the zone where I'm talking intellectually about the astrology. But my God, the emotions that are going on. And and I guess it's also fair to say. I mean, we don't often talk about Lilith in in these sessions. Lilith, the dark moon, is also in Taurus. So for those who are interested uh, in, in, in Lilith energy, so Lilith obviously represents the wild woman within us, within all of us, obviously we, we all have some of that energy, male and female, um, but really sort of that, that rawness of where we've been rejected in the past, where we've wanted, needed to feel our chaotic emotions like that is the energy and and it's in a very harmonious relationship with full moon in scorpio uh, and if we if we need to getting into our chaos that means letting stuff out without censorship this is this is the moment to do it because actually the worst censorship we do probably the worst thing that's ever happened to any person carrying that lilith energy is the feeling of having to conform 
and to conform to a system that they never felt they were part of and will never be able to to be completely part of in future so being able to absolutely break the rules make the rules and allow out that grief and rage is very much the experience that we need to go through and so i'd completely say to anyone that's feeling my god it all feels too much it's like that is okay you can have those feelings it is messy it is chaotic and somehow it, it's only when we go through that box of tissues whatever it is that we need to be hitting and screaming <laughs> we come out the other side <laughs> yeah but it's like you're absolutely spot on this is one of those things where it probably isn't going to be a neat it's not even a roller coaster it's like absolutely going through a portal to be able to allow those feelings that not being funny but we probably sit on depending on your beliefs we've got a lifetime's worth we'll have inherited that from our families many of us particularly down through our mother's side we've had generations particularly of women struggling with how to let these feelings out it, it's that's a gift to ourselves to allow us to have those feelings wow wow i almost want us to have a whole session just on this piece we've got people in the chat saying i've just come from a very heated conversation lots of grief and rage we've got reva saying that's me i guess i have a lot of wild woman in me right now i mean this is this is it right like there's this cage tigress and you know where does that energy go and i i feel like feeling a feeling giving ourselves permission like i'm not a big crier and i've allowed myself the last few days i've i've cried just rivers and <laughs> and like i cry on movies and things like that but i, I wouldn't cry on someone like I'm, I'm not somebody who goes to someone with my emotions often and i'm getting better at doing that and it's like there's this there's this liberation from being in the rage or being in the grief fully all the way through and and what i've learned is i've run from my feelings for so long and numb them or taken the edge off or whatever in different ways even even in the industry even working the way i do in healing and, and mm. with coaching there's still these places where you hide right and so this scorpio i feel like this full moon this bright light shining on the unconscious of our depths and our wild woman and this this raw messy edges so i almost like as you say to go out and see the moon tonight, i almost feel like saying to the to the women who need to hear this like go out and see the moon and you know if you need to wind the car windows up and have a good howl at that moon yeah absolutely and and that that's so fast well done Kat. because i think i think cry i think whenever we get to that point i mean the universe almost knows exact no matter how much work we've done before the universe knows how to put us right back at our own edge at sort of day zero in terms of our journeys and i imagine that there's quite a lot of us that are finding that we are absolutely on what we consider to be the edge of what we can hold how we can relate with others often quite a lot of the the techniques that we've learned before won't get us through this next stage because we're right on the edge so so absolutely allowing that we don't have control so part of that is being the wild woman and not wanting to control ourselves part of that is a realization that we cannot control everything we cannot control other people sometimes we don't even know how to keep control of ourselves and learning how to actually just experience and let that out and not be afraid of how deep we go because i think there's almost a feeling sometimes when we think oh well i've processed that or i've done a bit on that i'll be okay and i think this is almost a challenge to say well actually what else is in there with tenderness i think it's really important people don't feel that they have to do anything if it doesn't feel right but it is an opportunity to say I'm, I'm going to take that deep breath and actually see what's in in the cupboard because you never know it might actually be the very piece that you've been looking for yeah and the very piece that will what's in the way is the way but going through this will set you free yeah. on the other side uh Rima is saying i have so much i want to say but don't know how to articulate my emotions and express myself which ends up draining me so if i can find a way to say what i need to say i always look to the moon and i really am governed by the moon i don't know about howling though my neighbors might think i've lost the plot <laughs> it could be maybe writing or creating something yeah. non-verbally just something that you can channel that energy into something where you can move the emotions yeah. or feel emotions. you know um shouting maybe not be appropriate in the neighbors but you can always like go into a pillow or, or punch a pillow my friend used to always get a cricket bat with the, <laughs> with the pillow <laughs> 
I'm a big fan of the non-verbal because interestingly, quite a lot of our experiences are very early rage, abandonment, when we're babies, we're also pre-verbal. Mm. So actually this is where the music in particular, <laughs> sometimes painting. Oh my gosh, sorry. Oh. How crazy was that? Right. Bit of music. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, sorry it, and, it, and it's getting back in touch with the body so dancing mm. to music as well so those things because sometimes actually trying to talk about our feelings isn't necessarily the place to start the place to start is actually experiencing the feelings then the expressing bit sort of comes through i love that really true you know, I, I think these um virtual dance classes is something we're going to have to look into doing some sort of virtual silent disco for everyone the wild woman silent disco right. yeah yeah, I, I, I feel myself that there's, there is so much to say and yet there's nothing to say, right? It's like we're into the void, we're going into this abyss and I'm wondering about this waning moon now into that dark moon before we start this new cycle of quantum leaps. When, what, at yeah. what point will that be? Because I get this sense, um, the Terence McKenna quote keeps coming to me where we, we fear going into the abyss but when we let ourselves go we realise it's a feather bed. I, I, that's what I'm hearing, yeah. it's like go to yeah. the abyss go to that edge like you're saying like put just go through because when you go through that's when you get all the transformation and that's when the yeah. what seemed like the edge of a cliff was actually flying that was actually like the feather bed not the fearful yeah. terror abyss that you you had it in your mind to be i think that's right so it's very interesting so the next so two weeks time we'll be doing the new moon one week's time we do have the quarter moon which is when then we really move in towards that that deep waning and the dark moon energy and interestingly it will line up uh, the the moon will be with that saturn we were talking about earlier that's been squaring this one so actually that will be a point at which we really do feel sort of the, the between a rock and a hard place moment so so this is about sort of experiencing in in terms of the world we're going to find it almost refinding what we want our boundaries to be and then we'll have a challenge over the over the next week week and a half in terms of which boundaries do we actually really need to stick with and i suspect that that will lead to the next phase of letting go ready for the rebirth and the Taurus new moon there's definitely something about us needing to know even after all the all the emotional releasing that we need to do we will come around to a point where actually we're more certain of who we are and therefore back to the Taurian energy we're more certain about what we value mm. so new moon in Taurus is going to be standing by our own values and understanding our value individually you know really important for us all to be able to stand in the truth of who we are and love ourselves it's easy to talk about self-love um, but what we will find is that actually as all these emotions come out we have to start looking after ourselves a bit more that we'll have a new self-respect so actually it's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks for for people walking through on that journey um and i, I again i i think it's going to be beautiful but i suspect that we'll be we'll we'll, we'll be in our stuff you know saturn brings a lot of stuff to the table and, and there is going to have to be a bit of a weeding out of what, what, of, of what we want to keep and what we want to let go in accordance with our own desires. Right. So, so the more we know ourselves, the more we love ourselves, the better decisions we're going to make, the easier it's going to be for those quantum leaps to fill up with the right things for us right now. All that past baggage, you know, as the moon comes around with Saturn and does that square thing, it's like that, those past, sort of the baggage of the past will have to go. That, you know it just won't be able to stick to us anymore it won't be relevant for us no. it's very much about you know who am i becoming and what is relevant for that person that's the theme over the next sort of two to three weeks wow wow some of the psychic series that's in the youtube channel the eden room tv on youtube and there's the spirit guides session if people are feeling like they need to get a bit more in touch with with who they are and who they're becoming and what they're doing um and also i want to put in the chat the date so people can mark their diaries for that new moon in taurus where we're really diving deeper into our values and into those intentions for that new cycle up into the eclipses Oh my goodness, so much. Hold on to your hats. Uh, 
anything final thoughts before we wrap this up this is great vicky thank you so much i feel so much more grounded and prepared for what's ahead now yeah um i think just that piece about permission I think, I think more than anything, this, this of all the sessions that we've done, it's like if I could, I'd put a big virtual hug around everybody. Um, it does really feel as though sort of feeling our way into knowing that we're loved and protected so that it's safe to do our emotional processing is the most important piece. It can be hard to jump straight into the emotions. So feeling safe and protected first mm. then gives us a sort of a foundation then to leap off. And then whatever we do, we know it's okay. Mm. Love that. Love that, Vicky, mm -hmm. so much. All right. Well, thanks everyone for being with us. Big virtual hugs for you all. Tender days, tender times, but very beautiful, as we've said. Don't try and be pretty. <laughs> let the tissue, let the Kleenex and the mascara smudge and, <laughs> you know, but move it through and feel your feelings. We are totally with you here at the Eden Room. Let us know how we can support you. Let us know what content you're loving. We've just released tickets for our In the Flesh Wild Woman event on the summer solstice. That's a celebration uh, not to be missed on the 20th, 21st of June. Uh, Vicky will be there, I'll be there, Devs will be there. We've got a trance dance in the woods glamping with beautiful settings so definitely check that out and bring your best witches your good witches with you and have some sisterhood time i think that's my final thought i just want to share how grateful i am for the sisterhood you know my female connections and even male connections just my friendships and those people that see me i feel like those connections are stronger than ever and more vital and important than ever navigating these times um, so yeah, big love to all and find those people that you can, those shoulders you can cry on, those people you can unload the basket to. And it's a great exchange just to say, I need to empty my basket. You know, can you just hold the bucket while I just get this out? And, and then you kind of swap, you know, great. Okay, your turn, empty that bucket, you know, into the basket. Um, and, and I think that's very important at the moment to, to help us to kind of navigate the intensity. All right. Big love, everyone. Take it easy, be good to yourself, and uh, we'll see you on on the next call, which I'm going to put in the comments because I don't have yeah. a date right now, but we'll put it in the chat for you all for the next update with Vicky on the new moon in Taurus. Much love, everyone. Happy full moon. Thank you so much, Vicky. Gorgeous as always. See you next time.